Number 6. Megalodon In the animal kingdom, particularly when it comes to large predators, jaw power is one of the most important aspects. Hypercarnivores rely on a combination of size, speed and bite force. Judging by such criteria, the prehistoric megalodon is perhaps the most striking example of an apex predator. It inhabited a wide variety of marine environments, from tropical to temperate latitudes, up until 3.6 million years ago. At the upper estimates of its size, this monstrous shark weighed more than 60 tons and measured over 50 feet. It's believed to have been a robust shark and most likely looked like a giant version of today's great white. The megalodon possessed arguably the strongest bite of any creature in history at an estimated 41,000 pounds of force. Judging by reconstructions of its jaws, which measured up to 6 feet 6 inches across, it's not hard to understand why this creature was so dominant. The megalodon had over 250 teeth, distributed in five rows. They were large, robust and serrated, perfectly adapted for cutting through bone and flesh as the massive shark shook its head. It was at the top of the food chain, probably only facing competition from Liviatin, a genus of huge predatory tooth whales. It's believed that the megalodon went extinct from a combination of climate cooling and the extinction of its prey. Some experts argue that they were simply outcompeted by other predators, perhaps even great whites. Then there's the terrifying hypothesis that the megalodon didn't go extinct but simply adapted to living in the deep for longer periods of time. It seems to fall in line with other shark-related discoveries. The megamouth shark was discovered as recently as 1976 and one of the largest great whites, nicknamed Deep Blue, was first recorded in 2013. The HMS Challenger discovered megalodon teeth in 1873, which were dated from 11,000 to 24,000 years ago, but the analysis may have been erroneous. From time to time, there'll be reports of whales slaughtered by unknown predators, giant shark sightings, or fishermen reporting huge shadows moving in the deep. Yet most experts agree that if a creature the size of the megalodon was still around today, the world would know about it. That being said, with less than 95% of the world's ocean having been explored, the potential existence of the monstrous shark still entertains people's imagination. Were the beast still around, in the context of global warming, the ocean could rise in temperature to slowly reaccustom it to coastal waters. That wouldn't bode well for the human population in those areas, since the largest megalodon specimens can basically take down small vessels. Unarmed swimmers wouldn't stand a chance against the beast and even with the help of modern technology, we'd sometimes have trouble defending against it. Additionally, a potential re-emergence of the megalodon would likely bring the ocean's cetacean population to the brink of extinction. Number 5. Megatherium The megatherium, also known as the giant ground sloth, is one of the largest mammals to have ever roamed the earth. It was about the size of a modern elephant and surpassed in its time only by some mammoth species. It measured up to 20 feet from head to tail. The megatherium had powerful hind legs and a muscular tail, which together would often form a tripod, enabling the herbivore to reach taller tree branches. Stumbling upon this giant sloth as it reached for food would have undoubtedly been a terrifying sight for the early humans with whom it shared its habitat. Aside from its colossal size, it had curved claws, which were so big that the beast actually had to walk on the sides of its feet. Based on the estimated strength and mechanical adaptation of its biceps, experts suspect that the megatherium was able to use the claws on its forelimbs like deadly daggers. It was capable of taking out saber-toothed cats as well as glyptodons, which were basically giant versions of armadillos. The megatherium was native to the woodlands and grasslands of South America, where populations thrived until about 8,500 BC. It's believed that their extinction was a combination of habitat fragmentation and the rising population of human hunters. Yet, some have entertained the possibility that the giant ground sloth didn't die out but simply retreated to the most secluded parts of the Amazon rainforest. There's a creature in Brazilian folklore said to live deep in the jungle, which seems to resemble the giant ground sloth. It's called Mapinguari, and the claim is that it has 
backward facing feet, reminiscent of the Megatherium's knuckle walk and stands at over 10 feet tall. Despite massive deforestation, the jungle still covers roughly 2.1 million square miles. There are parts of the Amazon that remain untouched by modern humans and it's perhaps within these areas that some of the last Megatherium species have found refuge. It's unlikely, however, that a slow-moving creature of such proportions could have eluded humans for nearly 10,000 years. Number 4. Gigantopithecus Bigfoot is arguably one of the most popular cryptids in the world. Cryptids are creatures whose existence is disputed or unsubstantiated. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, have been the subjects of numerous alleged sightings as well as several hoaxes. Throughout the years, most scientists have discounted his existence while those who believe Bigfoot to be real have often explained it as a potential missing link between humans and our ape ancestors. Most depictions of Bigfoot refer to a large, hairy, ape-like creature which is capable of standing upright and bipedal locomotion. One veterinary laboratory called DNA Diagnostics issued claims in 2012 that they found evidence of the existence of Bigfoot. The creature was described as a hybrid of the modern Homo sapiens and an unknown primate species. It supposedly arose about 15,000 years ago. The head of the laboratory registered the name Homo sapiens cognatus and claimed that governments should recognize their human rights against those who would do them harm. The study was reviewed by geneticists who considered it to be unconvincing at best. Of the few qualified anthropologists and scientists who have reviewed the Bigfoot hypotheses, a number agree that the elusive cryptids may actually be a relic population of Gigantopithecus. These primates were still around as recently as 100,000 years ago, which would place them within the same time frame and geographical location as several hominin species. One subspecies Gigantopithecus blacki is known as the largest primate to have ever lived. Estimates of its size suggest it stood from 6 foot 6 to 10 feet tall and weighed between 660 and 1320 pounds. This does seem to fall in line with some Bigfoot sightings, however the problem is that no Gigantopithecus fossils have been found in the Americas, where a large number of Bigfoot sightings have occurred. Nevertheless, Scientists supporting the theory of Bigfoot as Gigantopithecus claim the animal could have migrated. Like a number of other animals, including humans, it could have used the Bering Land Bridge, which connected Alaska and Siberia. For most scientists, however, Gigantopithecus is still regarded as extinct. Climate change during the Pleistocene era turned plant ecosystems from forest to savanna. The primate's primary food supply of fruits thus decreased. Competition with Homo erectus may have also been a factor, which diminished the supply of food such as bamboo. Number 3. Titanoboa When European conquistadors arrived to South America, they would hear tales of monstrous snakes that measured over 50 feet in length. The locals would speak of creatures that moved through the rivers and snatched unsuspecting people from the shores. Nowadays, tropical South America is home to the green anaconda the largest snake in the animal kingdom. When it comes to sightings of gigantic serpents, it does seem a likely candidate. Yet even though this predatory snake can reach some truly impressive proportions, it pales in comparison to the Titanoboa, a native of present-day La Guajira in Colombia. The Titanoboa was at one point among the planet's largest animals. It weighed around 2,500 pounds and could grow to be over 42 feet long. At its thickest, it boasted three feet in diameter, thus dwarfing the anaconda or various python species. Its teeth were small and sharp, while the color of its skin ranged from dark brown to gray. This creature seems to better correspond with the stories spread among early European explorers. The only problem is that the Titanoboa lived 58 to 60 million years ago in what was South America's first recorded tropical forest. The gigantic snake emerged immediately after the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, which marked the disappearance of all large dinosaur species. No one knows for sure how it ultimately went extinct, but the most prominent theory has to do with declining global temperatures that affected its metabolism. Nevertheless, 
they are legends of titanic serpents swimming in the depths of the Amazon, which persist to this day. Indigenous tribes speak of the Yakumama, also known as the Mother of the Water, and alleged sightings emerge every so often. The murky waters of the Amazon would provide enough cover for the Titanoboa to carry out its existence in peace. At first, it was suspected to have been an apex predator, but based on an analysis of its cranial features, researchers now believe that it mostly ate fish. This means that it wouldn't necessarily need to compete with the larger anaconda species. Even if it's truly extinct, that doesn't mean that the Titanoboa or a snake of similar proportions won't one day populate the river basin. It's believed that during the Titanoboa's era, the earth was warmer. This aspect facilitated the growth of cold-blooded snakes. As the planet once again seems to be rising in temperature, it's conceivable that at one point, far in the future, giant snakes will make a comeback. Number 2. Sauropod Sauropods were, as far as we know, the largest land animals to have ever roamed the earth. These beasts were so massive that the ground shook when they walked. To assume these beasts are still around will require several leaps in imagination. The last of them, the Titanosaurs, would have had to survive the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Assuming they did so and retained their enormous size, it would be really difficult for them to simply walk around undetected. That being said, there were reports early in the 20th century of a creature fairly reminiscent of a sauropod living in remote areas of Africa. Indigenous tribes in Rhodesia described it as half dragon, half elephant. This would account for the sauropod's pillar-like legs, as well as for their long necks. Famous big game hunter Carl Hagenbeck concluded that the creature was similar to the Brontosaurus, arguably one of the most famous sauropod species. Other reports spoke of a river monster called Mokele Mbembe, and its features were also consistent with those of sauropods. Mokele Mbembe was reported as being at least as large as a hippo. It had smooth skin, a very long and flexible neck, as well as a large, muscular tail. Like all sauropod species, it exclusively fed on plants. The beast supposedly lived in caves washed out by the river and climbed to the shore during the day to find food. When some members of indigenous tribes were shown pictures of various sauropods, they pointed to them as being Mokele Mbembe. Before we move on, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. It's out of this world. Number 1. Mammoth It's become somewhat common knowledge that there were still mammoths roaming the earth when the Egyptians started building the Great Pyramid of Giza. At the time, roughly 3,700 to 4,000 years ago, some woolly mammoths were still living on what is today Wrangell's Island in Russia. The giant beast was covered in fur and well suited to the cold of the last ice age. It was the last to emerge in a line of mammoth species. It's one of the best studied prehistoric creatures and the discovery of frozen carcasses in Siberia and Alaska has been instrumental in understanding the animal. It was also heavily depicted in prehistoric art in the form of cave paintings, engravings or sculptures. It was hunted by both Neanderthals and modern humans. Woolly mammoth bones were used to make dwellings, tools, furniture and musical instruments. Climate change greatly reduced their habitats and it's believed that humans hunted the remaining populations into extinction. Much like with our previous entries, there's no concrete evidence to suggest that the woolly mammoth might still be around. Nevertheless, there have been claims that isolated herds still live in secluded parts of the northern hemisphere tundra. In the 19th century, Siberian herdsmen would report to Russian authorities sightings of large, shaggy beasts. Towards the end of the century, one hunter claimed to have killed a mammoth in Alaska and then to have donated it to the Smithsonian, but the museum denied the claim. In the 1920s, there were reports of furry elephants from a Russian trapper. When considering the sheer immensity of Siberia at 5.1 million square miles, the notion of these massive beasts still roaming the land can't be completely ruled out. Yet the real reason the woolly mammoth is at the top of our list is that it's among the prehistoric creatures that might one day be brought back. There are roughly 150 million mammoths buried in Siberia's permafrost waiting to be discovered. 
One frozen specimen found in 2013 had well-preserved muscle tissue and liquid blood in its abdominal cavity. This would suggest that the animal's blood had anti-freezing properties. Through advances in molecular biology and genetic engineering, such biological material can reportedly be used to recreate living mammoths. Some experts believe that one option would eventually be to create an elephant-mammoth hybrid, since their genomes match 99%. Although the projects currently in development still have a long way to go, mankind might eventually witness the return of the woolly mammoth. Thanks for watching. Which creature from prehistory would you like to see populate the Earth once more? Let us know in the comments section below.